Welcome back! I had this idea like 5 minutes ago that I wanted to create some really basic picture for Valentine's Day, something like a card or, or, or something, and I want to use this uh, watercolor brush from Krita. If I remember correctly, I didn't modify this brush at all. Water Paint Hard Edges, that's the name of it. It's one of the default brushes, and like I've been messing around with this for some time, but uh, I never made anything noteworthy with this, so I want to try it out. And what are we going to paint today exactly? If you know me already, then you would have suspected that I will make some sort of a Harry Potter fan art. I want to randomly select two of these characters and then make a little watercolor inspired painting of them. Obviously there is an elephant on this wheel, I have Ron and Ginny and there's a little chance that I'm going to get the two of them. In that case I'm going to create a picture with a step sister, stepbrother AU. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just joking, I'm not gonna do that. If uh, that happens, I'm just going to recreate this scene just with, you know, Ginny and Ron. And that's it. <laughs> and let's hope that we are going to accidentally get that because it would be really funny. So our first character is going to be... Ron. Okay. This is starting nice. Our first character is Ron. And who is going to be the second character? I should have turned on the... Sound of the wheel. Second character is Neville. Okay. And what I had in mind is that we have Map Crunch. I used this site before in one of my previous videos. This is a, a site where you can press this go button and it's going to spit you out somewhere randomly in the world in a Google Street View. And what I had in mind is that I'm going to click in the UK because these characters are located in the UK and I'm just going to get a random location and find some place where I could put them like a date location. So let's press go. Uh, who wouldn't want to go on a date on a road like this? Oh, there is something there. Maybe I shouldn't uh, be using uh, this site in Firefox because it's really laggy. I'm gonna create this part of this fence and like place some random tower thingy in the background and that's going to be our picture. It's not going to be a really heavy on the environment, I just want a, almost a sketchy version of the environment, but we will see how it goes. Let's take a screenshot, something like uh, this. I want this foliage part to be a little bit visible. There we go. Let's put this to the second monitor. Obviously I'm going to paint this version of Neville that I always do. This was actually inspired by some works of uh, Up the Hill, who always painted, uh, not always, but sometimes painted Neville with a beard. So he's going to have some of that and this like mid long hair. And uh, I want to paint Harry somewhat similar to this version, only with a little longer hair. Hello there, it's me from the editing room. So I was just editing this video when I realized that I got Ron and Neville from the wheel. But then for some reason my brain that was, I don't know, tripping on anxiety or something, totally switched Ron up with Harry. I have no idea when exactly that happened, but I didn't even notice that. I just went ahead and painted Harry without a second thought, so sorry for that, my bad. I don't know, I have this strange obsession with uh, long-haired characters. I just grab this version as well. I still want Harry to be a man on my picture. Maybe implement this version of the scar just with a more visible version where it goes um, through the eye or not through the eye, but like, you know, over the eye, like not damaging the eyeball. I'm just over explaining it. There would be this area in the middle where there is something and the edges of that uh, are gonna be faded or like maybe kept like this. I will just mess around and see what we find here. Don't forget, don't forget to hit the recording as I always do. I just have to remember not to go way too overkill with the environment. 
and we will be good. No, actually, I want this to be flipped. And I want like this post in the stone fence, and then there will be the continuation of the fence in both directions, but it's going to be two different materials. Like this is going to be like a more uh, modern looking fence in this side, and this is going to be this uh, stony fence because these are like two different uh, properties meeting meadow thingy in the <laughs> background that's actually really like far away so i want uh, i want something closer like even much closer than this i want this stony part to be like much closer to us i really shouldn't try to paint and uh, explain stuff at the same time so i will just unplug my microphone and i will show you uh, the result in a few minutes let's continue first i went in with the really bold method of just placing down color spots you can kind of do this traditionally as well but in digital you have the privilege of having infinite color picks and you can transform pieces of your image as well it still has this watercolor quality if you are careful enough, so I only use the sketch for the characters and not for the background. Don't get me wrong, it's uh, still obviously digital, which is a good thing, actually. I'm not trying to fool people into believing that this is watercolor, just, uh, I just want to have a similar feeling to that. And it seems that it uh, worked out really well. I want uh, maybe Neville sitting like here one of his legs parallel with the top of the fence i can speak and the other one would be hanging like this and he's kind of leaning a bit into this part of the wall sorry my english is uh, seemingly failing right now what about harry maybe i should modify this part of the wall to be something like this and harry would be sitting here with crossed legs uh, kind of leaning towards Neville or something Harry is going to be facing a little bit towards this side of the image with a head turned towards Neville that's actually a giant head <laughs> or Neville's head is too little do little Harry is going to have one hand on uh, Neville's knee or something let's get him a little bit shorter and closer something like that so there will be a little bit of overlap with the two characters and i collected a little uh, list of attributes harry is going to be wearing like most likely red uh, long-sleeved sweaters with some blue jeans and uh, neville is going to have a long uh, shirt that is most likely going to be green going well with this uh, environment and with a vest i don't know what pattern is going to be or something cargo pants something that uh, is like not so similar to the color of the wall my english is really really failing me right now what is happening <laughs> okay Th these are the moments when i should uh, write down actually what i want to say i'm gonna go progress with the sketch and we will see how that goes that's the most important thing i wanted to say now for the sketch i'm going to use the modified version of this ink ink pen it is another basic tool ink for pen rough the only thing that i modified is that i switched from auto uh, tip to this predefined one and like that's all and i turned on uh, these two things opacity and flow so you can use this one as well if you want to another little blooper i messed up the recording a little bit and it's uh, choppy at some places i'll correct that for the next video so what i went for is the ink plus watercolor images where i made a proper line art and i kept it on top of everything and then i added the watercolor spots below it it's similar to how you can use traditional watercolor that is not going to affect your ink so your line art is going to remain visible one little advantage of digital painting i use though is adding a solid base color on which i can build up my watercolor spots i mentioned it before but i've been practicing actual line art and sketches lately to make my drawings that can uh, properly support my paintings and i feel that it's significantly improved the quality of my finished works i'm actually in the middle of making an entire video series about this but uh, enough spoilers for now back to my neville and harry picture 
I just painted the wrong hand. <laughs> this is mirrored. We're supposed to see the thumb. Uh, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, that was quite fortunate that I noticed that I mirrored the hand uh, early on because if I noticed that like much later, I might have just uh, left it at that and uh, try to pretend that it's not even incorrect and I would have hoped that uh, nobody is going to notice that. No, I would have repented of course, but you know, annoying. What do we have so far? Two characters who look nothing <laughs> like Neville and Harry. Also, good luck convincing someone that Harry is a guy here. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, you know, obviously going to be fixed. One quick surgery that I will do is this thing, because these four arms are really long. He's like a... what is that? That animal? You know, the really slow animal that is crawling on trees? Slot, yes. He looks like a slot here, a little bit with those giant arms. I want to make a proper version of the line art. I ended up uh, upscaling the image uh, to 150%. So instead of uh, 4K high, I'm having a 6K high image because it would be really hard to work on the details of the faces. I hope that it's not going to like really ruin the rest of the picture. We will see. Right now I have uh, a base color for the characters, but I'm going to be using the watercolor brush to properly make the shading. My main tools are going to be this brush that I showed and the smudger. I will be careful with this because uh, this create like two really distinct textures and I want it to look much more like this watercolor one. And I don't know, maybe I will just uh, lose patience halfway through and I will <laughs> use my uh, you know, my regular little brushes like these to finish off the characters. This is a good base and uh, what we really need now is a proper line art. So that's going to be our next part to work on. Line art movement. Boom. Base color movement. Boom. Something like this. His stomach was sliced. Somebody used some dark curse on Neville, poor Neville, but he is fixed in a matter of seconds. Everybody told him that Harry is going to be able to fix him. And would you look at that? <laughs> okay, that was... that that joke didn't make any sense. <laughs> Let's make that proper line work before I... 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 rumble for too long and we run out of time. Okay, that is the part where I finalized my line art. I could have worked on it much more actually to make it almost as a standalone picture, you know, just the line drawing, but I was really enthusiastic about finally starting on the watercolor part and I was just impatient. I still made sure to finish the faces and hands of the characters properly. For the colors, I almost used my regular method of painting with using uh, two layers of shadows, two layers of lights and uh, one for the facial details like the lips and eyeballs. But I didn't use any layer modes other than normal and with this method I wasn't even missing it at all. Also I turned the line art of Neville's skin to red instead of black so it looks a little bit more natural. Maybe some people would have preferred to keep it pure black, but I'm happy that I went with this one. By the way, rendering Neville went way smoother than I expected. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it went much better than I expected. I feel that I'm mostly done with Neville, I don't really want to touch uh, any of this much more. Like Some of these are really really sketchy, but it was kind of the look that I was going for. Like obviously you could uh, hand render all of this but uh, it would kind of defeat the purpose, I feel, and then, you know, it would be just some strange method of going through the first stages of rendering instead of using this as a final image. I especially like these scribbly things on the vest that is uh, this really reflective 
material. Maybe these wouldn't look the same at every step, but uh, let's just ignore that for a moment. One surgery that we will need to do is that he's looking at, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe we should put a bug in Harry's hair and he's looking at that. Or what I planned is that when the, everything is going to be finished, I'm just going to really quickly cut out his head and rotate it a little, little bit so Neville is looking at Harry. You know, the eyes are a little strangely shaped uh, and uh, pretty much all of the face features could have been done better. But for this look and this uh, result, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. As I said, I might uh, fix up uh, some little parts, but now let's go and uh, do Harry. I might also give some extra details for the building or something, but uh, we will see all of those. Now, going through the same steps once again was quite easy. I'm actually a bit scared that I'm experiencing some serious Dunning-Kruger effect right now, and it's actually way worse than uh, how I see it right now. Three things that uh, didn't go as smoothly are uh, getting Harry's skin tones right. I had to go back and forth a little bit with those. Also, the texture and feeling of this sweater is not as good as the other clothing items. One attribute of the material is that the light is spread much more evenly on it when compared to Neville's shirt, for example. Maybe I should have went more easy with the contrast on it. Also, his long hair was a bit more challenging. Black hair always looks more reflective, but I feel that uh, some careful brushwork uh, made his hair look nice and shiny. I did a few fixes on his face as well. One of his eyes was uh, located in a pretty strange place, and his hairline was also slightly misplaced, but they were quite easy to work in uh, with a surprisingly low number of extra brush strokes. In the end, I added some extra details to the building in the background, and I added some really blue shadows on the stones of the wall. You know, the impossibly cold shadows that accompany the warm light that is hitting the whole scene. Okay, I totally forgot to record an outro when I finished the picture. Overall, I feel I said it multiple times during the process, but it ended up much better than I expected. <laughs> I was ready to call it a failure, or like a total failure, but by following my regular painting method with uh, keeping the different elements on separate layers, I managed to make the watercolor spots actually look good. Obviously can't compare to someone's work who is a dedicated watercolor artist, but I'm really happy with uh, how the final look of the picture ended up, and it honestly was a really great experience because it made me think about these shapes a little differently and not the same way I always do. So please uh, tell me what you think, leave a hate comment for accidentally painting Harry instead of Ron, and don't forget to subscribe for more digital painting videos. I have a series of 13 witches that I'm painting right now. You won't want to miss that one. And now, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day, do some art, and most importantly, have fun while doing that. Farewell.